This video is part of a series of videos on how to use auto traffic. Be sure you start from the first video. The link to the playlist is in the description below. I intentionally made some mistakes so you can see how the script points those things out to us and we can go and so we can go back and correct it okay so let's start with the first option one that many people take really lightly please do not do that because uh, many people reach out to me for something that's already been covered in detail and uh, and and so i strongly encourage you now i'm in the first option which is the description disclaimers and prerequisites we get terms and conditions with lots of things that we buy and we just ignore them it's not one of those long documents it's to tell you some important information so do not ignore this the link where you will find this is right here um, this is a course how to use auto traffic when i say course it's not going to take you hours to complete but it has some key information that will help you use the script in a better way of course this video is actually going maybe an may complement that guide already or may even be better because i just want i just thought a video guide might be easier for people to follow and so here i am first descriptions and disclaimers it's all explained on the on the on the on the course so how do you get to the course so if you go if you're on my website right there you go to courses and you have how to use auto traffic this is not open to public so you will have to <coughs> excuse me you will you will have to purchase the script to have access to this one right there and you can see all the different lessons and you can go through one at a time and uh, um, and uh, complete those before you use the script so here um, you have auto traffic requirements which tells you all the different things that you're supposed to do for the script to work or um, do what it does successfully here's where I made some mistakes so let's see how the script works now okay so right now i'm going to say i have read the information and acknowledged it so now it's going to take me back to the main menu you can see that that step is now marked as complete steps one to three must be completed before you keep moving further let's go to step number two which is providing the required information for auto traffic to work okay so Big change here again, instead of the, um, the command line environment where we provided these variables in version one, now I have this nice little UI where um, you, can, you can move around, make some changes, edit, uh, you can do a bunch of different things, but it's still a little quirky. So let's see how it is, because if I just press enter right now, it automatically exits out of this window and then you can get back here and continue. That's again a good advantage compared to version one. So if you make a mistake, when you come back to this option, whatever you entered previously is still going to be there unless you hit cancel. So um, if you just accidentally hit enter, which is our um, intuitive response most of the time, uh, it's, it's going to be okay. So let's start with the first one, simple home lab.com is my uh, test domain name so i'm going to leave that use the arrow keys as it says here up down uh, arrow keys to navigate do not press enter because you're, you're going to get exit out and use the delete or the backspace backspace key to erase the information if it already exists so i am using my previously created username i'm going to use anand for my http authentication as well now Again, HTTP authentication is optional, but again, I do not want to install traffic and have the dashboard visible by default to the internet. So this is why I included this option. Eventually, I do recommend people move out of basic authentication. And this is one reason why I added something really cool to this, this, this script right here. So uh, keep following. So next, we're gonna see um, the Cloudflare email and password. I'm going to give something um, wrong right here. Let's see what the script does. But I'm going to also edit it offline so you don't see what I enter here. Usually for this question here, most people will answer no unless you are on Proxmox and your instance is um, LXE container. 
uh, unprivileged LXC container, which is how I run my setup. My home server my media server at home are unprivileged LXC containers. But now this is on this test, test environment is on DigitalOcean um, a VPS. So I'm going to say no and I'm going to hit tab so it goes over to OK and then that's it. So all of this information will now be saved. So if I go back to op, option two right now, there you go. You are you see the information that you already entered. So I'm just going to keep say OK and exit out again. Now, step number three, I made some mistakes. So let's see if the script can pick up those mistakes for us. It doesn't pick up everything at the beginning, but most stuff of the stuff is going to be picked up here. First, it's checking for if my username exists, the van IP of your instance or the public IP of your of the instance uh, it's already taking a long time to to check the subdomain so I that's actually a good sign because I intentionally did make a mistake so I want to see if it fails and there you go it failed so you have a problem in the way you define the one of the required records so if i go back to auto traffic requirements right here it says a dns a record pointing to the public ip dns uh, c name record that points to the root domain and i did not do this one so intentionally so you can see how the script works okay so if i um if i fix that so i'm gonna go head over to my cloudflare environment and this is the one uh, the, uh Okay, I'm going to change this one to 6, which is the right IP address, and I'm going to change this one. It wasn't supposed to be test. It's supposed to be a wildcard. Now, you can also specify your subdomains manually. It's going to complicate. I am pretty sure many people who are starting out will make mistakes. So for ease and convenience, we'll just put... Uh, Asterisk right here, which will take care of all subdomains and then hit save. Okay, usually Cloudflare is pretty fast, but this can take this change that you make here can take some time to propagate. So give it some time, but then well, let's go back. I think Cloudflare is quite quick, so let's go back and run this check again and see what happens now. Um, there you go, it's already passed. Okay, so the subdomain check, the domain check is all done. Um, Cloudflare proxy status is another thing right now if I go back to not that one right here if I go to my DNS records they're all gray clouded which means the proxy Cloudflare proxy is disabled which is how we want it in the beginning so we're going to leave it like that um, so that all the checks are done it's also going to check if docker is installed on your system or not if not it uses um, the the uh, um, convenience script provided officially by Docker to install Docker on your system. It also is going to upgrade any of any um, uh, outdated packages, which is what you're seeing. And finally, it's also going to check the ports. Okay, here again, I made a mistake intentionally to see if the, the if the script picks it up. Port eighty and 443 are required for traffic so we need to have those forwarded from the router or the internet gateway to the um, server that's running the script internal ip address of the server that's running the script my port forwarding is working for, well actually it doesn't exist here because it's a vps instance in uh, out in the public so it's it's reachable from the internet but if you are running this in your home environment your router needs to be set so ports 80 and 443 are forwarded to this server what i did do in this case here is that my firewall is running um, so i'm going to exit out of the script right now so you can see it my firewall is running and if i say ufw status it's going to show me that my firewall is active so ufw well actually i'm using bash aes's my firewall is active so i intentionally blocked port um, 443 so there is no access on port 443 from the internet so if i go sudo ufw status numbered it's going to show me 
all the different ports that are open on this particular VPS and you can see 80 is open but 443 is missing this is why the check failed so I'm gonna say sudo uw add 443 now this is gonna sudo uw allow oh, sorry that was my mistake so sudo uw allow it's been added now if I run the script again dot forward slash auto traffic dot shb <coughs> oh sorry i have to use the the version number okay there you go now if i run the script let's go back to ch the checks run it again let's see if everything passes right now We're gonna let it do its thing again. It should be faster than the first time because all the required packages, everything was already done. Port 80 is available and open. Port 443 is good as well. So all checks are passed. All checks passed, so which is a great sign. I think we have the right setup right now to, to start uh, proceeding with docker and traffic this is where this is how you can use the free part of the script to check your environment to make sure that everything is working fine before you start following my guide so if you haven't liked the video or my channel yet please do so so i'm just starting out and every bit of support from people who watch the videos will really help me grow my channel it helps the youtube algorithm see that you find my videos valuable and I get more visits on my videos. Okay.